January 2019. Question 1. An engineer has plotted a straight line graph. Here it is. Based on the results of an investigation. And it's labelled the first investigation, so we'll be anticipating about another one second, I presume. Just on a quick glance, I've got an intercept of 6 and the gradient is negative. I'll look into that more later if I need to. Let's look at some further information. Shockingly, they have not labelled their axes. That's a massive failing in my view, but never mind. The results of a second investigation, we, we saw that coming when they said first here, are represented by the expression y equals 3x plus 1. Right, let's go ahead and just label these axes before we get too uncomfortable with that absence. Okay, so y equals 3x plus 1. I know in the form y equals mx plus c that the c part, in this case 1, will be our y-axis intercept. So I know that we're going to have a point there where the graph crosses it. Now, m, the coefficient of x, is positive. So this is going to slope in the opposite direction. It's going to slope this way. And for every 1 we go across, we go up by 3. So across 1, up 3. Across 1, up 3. Across 1, up 3. And we can continue the pattern backwards. Back 1, down 3. And those should be in a nice straight line. Let's have a little look at plotting that using our ruler. Okay, I'm lined up on all those points, so I'm going to plot that line there. I'm going to label this as second investigation. And I've done everything they've asked of me. I've drawn a straight line graph to show the second investigation. Straight line, and I've shown its second investigation. Okay, let's continue to part B. Find the coordinates of the intercept for the lines plotted for the first and second investigation. So this isn't the y-axis intercept. This is where the two lines intercept each other, which is here. It's where they cross. And the coordinates are going to be 1 and 4. Coordinates are shown with a comma in between, brackets either side, x first and then y, just like we talked about when we looked at the graph. And that is question one. Question two. A milling machine cutter completes 1,750 revolutions in 3 minutes 30 seconds. 3 minutes 30 seconds. If I'm doing a calculation with that, I'll need to remember that that's not 3.3 .3 as a decimal. We'll check that later. Calculate how many revolutions are completed in one minute. Well, basically, what I need to do is divide this by this. And that point I made earlier is going to come into bear. I need to do 17, 1,750 divided by 3.5. 30 seconds is half a minute and 0.5 is, is a half. So we need to make sure we've done that conversion there. Then with the calculator, making sure I've typed in what I've written. And though I've, I did write it here as you should in the exam to show you're working. And that gives us 500. Okay, and that's revs. You could put RPM, I suppose, because it's revs in one minute. But they're asking how many revolutions in one minute. 500 revolutions. Let's continue straight on to question three. A communication tower has a cable attached as shown. There's the cable, there's the tower, and this is the ground. That makes sense. The angle here is unknown, but we're going to be asked about it because they've marked it. The ground is 30 metres, and so metres are our units, and the tower is 15 metres. Now, unless we're in Pisa, the tower won't be leaning, so it will be at 90 degrees. We can 
annotate our diagram to remind us of that. Consequently, I know I'm dealing with Sokotoa here. So let's go ahead and make a note of that. So let's see what sides we've got. Well, there's the right angle. So here must be the hypotenuse, and that does look like it's the longest one. So that's pretty safe. There's the angle we're considering. So this is the opposite. And next to the angle, here is the adjacent. OK, so do I have the opposite? Yes. Do I have the hypotenuse? No. Adjacent? Yes. Hypotenuse? No. Opposite? Yes. Adjacent? Yes. We want to use tan. Right. So the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And if you get those mixed up and model them up, just remember tan opposite adjacent. That's what that's for. OK, so tan of our angle. What's our angle called? Well, it's called theta, so we can leave it as theta. And that's going to be opposite. The opposite is 15. By having annotated the diagram, it's really quick to check that and not get mixed up later. You might forget which one you thought was the opposite and the adjacent. If you've noted it down, you won't forget. And adjacent is 30. And the final step, I guess, apart from evaluating, is I need to do inverse tan on both sides of our equation. And inverse tan of 15 over 30, for that I'll need the calculator. Making sure the calculator is in degrees mode, and yes, it's in degrees, let's do shift tan 15 over 30, and that gives us 26.565, etc. Rounding, that will be 26.6, and this is an angle, and our angle will do it in degrees. They haven't specified, but that's the obvious one to go for, and we've done it to three significant figures. Okay, and that's question three done as well. Question four. The diagram represents a cone that covers a satellite receiver. Here's the diagram. We've got the perpendicular height. The slope length is marked, but not given. That's an L, not a 1. And we've got the radius here. It is the radius, not the diameter, so we don't have to half it. OK, we're asked to calculate the length of the slope, L. Now, this can be done using Pythagoras, because this perpendicular height 3 here, that will be the same here. And the radius, of course, is the same anywhere on the circle. And the radius with the perpendicular height makes 90 degrees, right angle triangle, Pythagoras. OK, so since this is the hypotenuse, we need to, in order to work out L, square root, the sum of the other two sides squared. And that can be done in our calculator. Square root 3 squared plus 2 squared. And that gives us 3.6055, etc. Which we can round to 3.61. The units, it's a length, we're using metres, and that's three significant figures. OK, so that's part A done. Let's move on to part B and see what's going on. Calculate the surface area of the cone. Now, in the formula book, we get curved surface area of a cone is equal to pi times the radius times the slope length. However, this is just the curved surface area of the cone. 
Let's ask ourselves if we need to add in the base. It doesn't specify total surface area and it doesn't specify curved surface area. That's a little unclear. If we look up here, it doesn't say whether or not it's got a base. So we're going to have to think a little bit. If this is a cover, it needs to go over the object, which means it needs to, the object needs to be able to go inside it, which means the base needs to be open. In other words, there isn't a base. So I'm going to go with the formula as given. I'm not going to add in an additional circle for the bottom. Pi, that's a constant. The radius is 2. And the slope length, L, we worked out in the previous part, is 3.61. And as always, I'm not going to enter 3.61 into the calculator. I'm just going to use the answer button. So pi times 2 times the answer, because I had that in there unrounded previously, giving me 22. 0.654 etc which rounds to 22.7 and that will be meters squared because it's a surface area and that's the three significant figures question five the results of a test on an electronic circuit are represented by the expression 32x squared minus 24x plus 4 equals 0. Never mind the fact that this is an equation, not an expression. We'll let them off. They're only engineers. Where x represents the time when two LEDs light up on a display. Calculate using the quadratic formula the two values of x when the LEDs light up. So the first thing that I'm going to note is that this is already equal to zero. That's not something I need to do. That's been done. It's, it's come all ready to go. So next I'm to think to myself the quadratic formula. That's given in the formula sheet. And I'll note it on the page in a second. But first up, A, that's the 32. It's the quadratic coefficient. B, that's the linear coefficient, which is negative 24. If you miss that negative out, this question is pretty much a blowout. And C, the constant, is positive 4. OK, so the quadratic formula, as given in the formula sheet, x equals minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So let's substitute in the values that we've got up here for a, b and c into the quadratic formula. x equals minus b. b is minus 24. I always substitute negative values into brackets to avoid missing the fact that it's a double negative and also later on when squaring it's essential otherwise you'll get the wrong value. B again, negative 24 squared. And it's worth noting, if you leave those brackets off, your calculator will square the 24, but not the negative 24, because it'll do bid mass and do the indices before the subtraction. So you have to have brackets when squaring a negative number. It's essential. You will get the wrong value if you do not. That's A, 32, times by C, which is 4. Okay, make sure when you do the vinculum, that's the line in your fraction, it extends all the way that it needs to, covering the whole of the numerator up there. The denominator is 2a and a is 32, so that's 2 times 32. Now don't be, attempt, don't, be, don't be tempted to simplify any of this. Substitute as is for the substitution mark in the mark scheme. We're going to simplify next. So, negative negative 24 is positive 24. 
plus or minus the square root and in the calculator this if I type all of that in I get 64 so I've got the square root of 64 and that is being divided by 2 times 32 which in the calculator or your head either way is 64 now I'm going to deal with the fact that there's going to be two answers x equals 24 plus the square root of 64 which is 8 divided by 64 over here I'm going to have x equals 24 minus 8 divided by 64 so I've got the plus and I've got the minus this then gives me two values x equals 0.5 and I get that using the calculator and also putting this into the calculator x equals 0.25 of course if you wanted to double check your work you can use the equation tool on the calculator menu down to option a we want to do a polynomial of degree 2 because it's a quadratic Paris 2 we've got 32 negative 24 and 4 and that gives us an answer of x is 0.5 and x is 0.25 and it only takes a moment to check your work and that's the end of section A.